coming, Mother. The Aldrich Family, written by Clifford Goldsmith and starring Ezra Stone. Entertainment for all the family, brought to you by Postum, a tempting, wholesome drink for all the family. Postum. Yes, folks, it's time again to drop in on the Aldrich family. Time to enjoy the relaxation that comes from a visit with this typical American family. Relaxation, of course, is something we all need. And sometimes, if a tense, nervous condition prevents you from getting it, it's well to ask this question. Is coffee making you nervous? Would you be better off drinking Postum instead of coffee? Well, now, far be it for me to imply that there aren't many folks on whom coffee has no ill effects whatever... That's obvious when you consider how popular coffee is. But I do know that coffee does make many people nervous. So if you think it sets your nerves on edge, switch to Postum. Postum contains no stimulants, nothing that could possibly affect your nerves. Drink Postum with all its flavor and fragrance instead of coffee and see if that nervous feeling doesn't go away. See if you don't feel really relaxed again once you give Postum a fair trial. Tom Sawyer, Penrod Schofield, and Huck Finn are real boys to all of us because their adventures and their ways of thinking are those of every real boy. And now Henry Aldrich joins the ranks of America's favorite youngsters, a boy from your own block or even perhaps from your own home. We join Henry Aldrich and his friend Homer in the Aldrich living room. The time is just before dinner. Gee, Homer, if that isn't a nice thing to do to my best coat. Now, listen, Henry, you talk just as though I'd thrown it into the lake on purpose. I didn't know my girl was going to jump. When? When the bee attacked her, out in the canoe. Well, gee whiz, Homer, look at my coat, soaking wet. And I'm supposed to wear it to the lecture next week. All right, Henry, if that's the way you feel about it, watch and see if I ever borrow your coat again. And look at the things in the pockets. Look at my girl's picture. She's all warped. Part of that's natural. It is not. Eleanor Wentworth is one of the best... Oh, boy. What's the matter? Oh, boy. What have I done now? Look at this letter. It's ringing wet. Who's it from? I don't know who it's from. Only somebody in my family gave it to me to mail last week. They did? Yes, Homer, and I never thought you'd do a thing like this to it. Who's it addressed to? Well, that's the trouble. Can't you see the water's washed all the ink off the envelope? Whose name is on the back? Not so loud, Homer. Do you want my mother to hear you? Henry, are you almost ready for dinner? Why, uh, yes, I am, Mary. Here, Homer, take this coat and this letter up to my room. Now? Sure, and put them on the radiator and turn on the heat. Okay. Homer, your mother phoned for you to come home a long time ago. Oh, she did? Well, thank you. Mary... I've been intending to ask you, is Joe Graham still out of town? Yes. That's what I thought. If I remember correctly, you gave me a letter to mail to him, didn't you? Yes. That's what I... Did you ever get an answer? Yes. Oh. Well, that's fine. Why do you ask? Well, I was just wondering. Mary! Yes, Father? Your mother wants you to help her in the kitchen. Oh, my goodness, I'll go right out. Hello, Henry. Oh, hello, Father. Homer gone home? No, sir. He's upstairs drying... He's upstairs, sort of... He's upstairs. You say he's upstairs? Yes, sir. Just temporarily. How did everything go with you today? Fine. How's... business? Fine. How... are the mails coming through? The mails? What mails? Just the mails. Well, they're coming through fine. Why do you ask that? Well, I was just... Henry! Yes, Mother? Dinner's all on the table. We'll be right there. Sam, come in and start talking. Yes, Alice? Look, Mother, is there anything just offhand that you can think of that I haven't done that you told me to in the last few weeks? What do you mean by that? Well, I don't know. I was just asking. Alice, how are the tickets going for the lecture at the women's club? Sam, I'm worried sick. What's the trouble? Well, dear, I haven't had any word from the man that's coming to give the lecture, and here it is less than a week off. Mother, aren't you chairman of the lecture committee? Yes, dear. Why, uh, 
Why don't you hear from him? Well, Henry, I wish I knew why. Oh. When did you write to him? Last week. I gave you the letter to mail. You gave it to me? Sam, I'm almost positive I did. Didn't you mail it? If you gave it to me, I mailed it. Henry, did I... Mother, could I have the bread, please? Here you are. And, Father, shall I pass this who's it to Mother? Yes, please. Goodbye, Henry. I think everything's going to be all right. What's that, Homer? What's going to be all right? Well, I don't think he meant anything special, Father. Sam, how much time do you think I'd need to get an answer to my letter? Well, three or four days should be more than enough. Actually, it only takes two. Mother, what city does the lecturer live in? He doesn't live any place. He travels all over. Oh, that's too bad. Maybe that's why he didn't get your letter, Mother. He's spending all of this month in Chicago, Mary. In Chicago? Yes, Henry. On what street? What difference does it make? Alice, are you sure you addressed the envelope correctly? I'm almost positive I sent it to 721 St. Eaglestone Drive. 721? Yes, dear. What's his name? Henry. Well, Mary, can't you take an interest in this lecture, too? I'm not going to it. Oh, yes, you are, dear. We're all going. Am I going? Now, Sam, you've got to go. And ruin an entire evening? Dear, I don't care for John William Steber any more than you do. But after all, I'm chairman, and the least you can do is go and hear Steber. Steber? Steber? How would you spell a name like that? Henry, what difference does it make? Well, after all, suppose somebody came up to me and said, Did you ever hear of John William Steber, 721 St. Eagleston Drive, Chicago? I wouldn't even know how to spell it. Sam, have you been able to get them? No, Alice. The long-distance operator will call us the minute she does. Well, I'm afraid we're making a mistake. People who bought tickets to hear John William Steber lecture on Guatemala the Beautiful are not going to care for a lecturer on child behavior. How about getting old Uncle Jim Murphy over here on the edge of town? What for? Well, he used to put on a magic act for the children at the hospital every Christmas. Dear, let's not be ridiculous. It's better than nothing. You've got to have something when the crowd gets there Tuesday night. Let me see that letter once more. What letter? The one that came this morning from John William Steber. Here. And for as long as I live, I'll never understand how a mistake like this happened. He says, dear Mrs. Aldrich, I regret very much that I must change my plans and decline your offer to address the Centerville Women's Club Winter Forum. I enclose a letter which was apparently sent to me by mistake. Yours truly, J.W. Steber. Sam, how did I ever do a thing like that? This letter he returned was to Aunt Sue. It looks as though he dragged it out of some lake. Dear Sue... Don't, for heaven's sake, come all the way to Centerville just to hear John William Steber next Tuesday night. Why the club ever voted to have him, I'll never know. He's a terrible bore. Yes, very well put. Sam, I don't think he had any right to turn down an important engagement just because of the petty opinion of one individual. You mean this opinion? But he had no right to read it. After all, he could see it wasn't for him. Alice, you're lucky the man isn't suing you. Father, could I have this week, please. Your allowance, Henry? Oh, gee whiz, did Mother get a letter from... from... did Mother get a letter? Yes, dear, from Mr. Steber. Oh, then that's not on our minds anymore. What do you mean, our minds? Well, isn't it an answer to... to, can he come? No, dear, he's very much upset over something. In fact, I did a very absent-minded thing. What? Well, I wrote a letter to your Aunt Sue, dear, and addressed it to Mr. Steber. And he was just a little hurt. Oh. Oh. Is that the letter that you... You mean that letter? That's too bad. Yes, Henry, it is. Oh. Oh, yes. Well, look, is there anything I can do? No, dear. What could you possibly do? Well, I feel I ought to do something. And I wish you could. Oh, here's your allowance, son. Well, on second thought, Father, I don't think I need any this week. Where are you going that you don't want any? Well, just over to see Eleanor Wentworth. Well, don't come home too late. No, Mother. Goodbye, Henry. Goodbye, and and I'm certainly sorry this happened. Henry, don't you want to sit here on the sofa and look at these pictures with me? Pictures? These pictures. Henry, tell me. What? Are you worried about something? Who, me? You've been sort of so preoccupied ever since you got here. I'm not preoccupied. Have you any writing paper? Any what? Writing paper. I've decided to write a letter to Chicago. No? Yeah, I think it's something I've got to attend to. Well, I have a little, but it's pink. Well, that's all right. Gee, in a case like this, I don't think I ought to take the time to worry about the color. Oh, all right. 
What are you crying for? I'm not crying. Well, what have I done? I'll tell you what you've done, Henry Aldrich. I'll tell you. You asked me to save this Saturday evening for you, and ever since you've gotten here, you've hardly said ten words. I have? Yes, you have. It. And now you want to write to somebody else. <laughs> To whom are you speaking? It's only me, Mrs. Wentworth. Oh, you wait, Henry Aldrich, and see whether I ever save you another Saturday night. But I can't help it if the women's club is expecting Guatemala, and I... and I... and then he won't come. Henry. Mother, has Henry gone crazy? No, I haven't. Aren't you going to the lecture Tuesday night? Yes. Well, that shows how much you know about it. He isn't even coming. Who isn't? Nobody. That's why my mother's got to get someone, and, and it's all on account of... on account of... My... Gee whiz, Mrs. Wentworth, I feel I ought to do something about it. Well, my gracious, why didn't you say what was on your mind, Henry? Mother, you ought to know someone. You know lots of musical people in Chicago. Well, I don't know anyone, dear, we could get on this short notice. Do you know some musical people, Mrs. Wentworth? Well, you see, Henry, I studied music right up until I was married. In fact, Henry, Mother was going to have a career in music. Only Father asked you not to. What did she play? I sang... Well, gee whiz, are you the one I always hear in church? Sort of louder than everybody else? <laughs> well, my... My voice always was noted for its body. Oh, yes. Mother, why couldn't you help the women's club out and sing? Instead of Guatemala? Oh, I don't think I should, Henry. Sure, why not? Gee whiz, my mother's desperate. Oh, now, please, Mother, I'd love to hear you sing. Eleanor, your father'd never speak to me again. All right, he doesn't have to go. I know my father won't. Uh, well... Thank you just the same, Henry, but you know how people turn up their noses in this town at home talent. It has to come from Chicago or it isn't any good. But after all, Mother, you studied in Chicago for years right on Michigan Avenue. Oh, of course, the hall at the women's club is just ideally suited for my voice. It is? Oh, of course it is. And, and Mother, Mr. Tyson, who plays the organ at the church, can accompany you. Yes, dear, if I can just keep him from playing too loud. He always thinks he's the soloist. Well, gee, I'll have my mother have a talk with him. She's chairman. She can tell him how loud to play. No, dear. No, I'll take care of that. You just ask your mother whether there's anything in particular she'd like to have me sing. Okay. Um, here, uh, let me see now. Uh, what is it uh, you're uh, writing, Mrs. Wentworth? Here are two suggestions for her. One's French, dear, and one's Italian. That's fine. And is there any song you could sing from Guatemala? <laughs> Well, as usual, the tune Henry's playing seems to be just slightly off-key, and it remains to be seen whether he'll strike any more sour notes. In the meantime, if I may, I'd like to suggest a sweet note, <clears throat> something that should strike a chord of harmony with all of you who enjoy having a good hot drink with your meals. Folks, try a steaming, fragrant cup of delicious Postum. Sugar and cream it to suit your taste, and see if you don't agree that it's tops for goodness. I'm sure you will, because Gold and Brown Postum gives you just what you want in a mealtime drink. Cheering warmth to give you that glowing feeling, tempting fragrance that says drink hearty, and best of all, Postum's really grand flavor. Just don't expect Postum to taste like coffee any more than you'd expect coffee to taste like tea, for Postum naturally is different. Its flavor is distinctive, and believe me, when you taste it, you'll say, this shouldn't be called Postum, it should be called post <laughs> So tomorrow, make Postum for everyone in your family. Serve it to youngsters as well as grown-ups. And see if you don't agree that there's no hot mealtime drink quite so good as Postum for all the family. Now, getting back to the troubles of Henry Aldrich. Henry, feeling just a bit guilty because his mother is unable to get a lecture for the women's club for next Tuesday night, has found that his girl's mother once studied music and that she is more than eager to arise to the occasion. Well, as he starts for home, he carries with him a list of songs she would be willing to sing. The scene opens late that night in the Aldrich front hall. But, Sam, I couldn't have concentrated on a game of bridge tonight if I'd had to. Well, worrying about Tuesday night's lecture isn't going to help any. Let's go up to bed. Did you lock the door, dear? Yes, dear. Henry in? Yes, dear. His coat's right here in the closet. After all, things could be worse. Why don't you simply announce that there won't be any program? Because I was asked to get someone. If we cancel it, I've utterly failed. Hey, wait a minute. What's this? What's what? This note by the telephone. A note? It's from Henry. Mother, you will be relieved to hear that Mrs. Wentworth, I think, has the solution to your program. She would like, when you can, to talk to her about it. About what? I don't know, Alice. I haven't finished. 
She sent along the letter that is with this, which she says you will understand. Glad you won't have to worry any more, Henry. Is this the letter she sent? Yes. Dear Mrs. Aldrich, no doubt by the time you read this, Henry will have explained everything. Here are a few suggestions for you to choose from. Don Fatale, Batty Batty, Casta Diva. Sam, what on earth? Yeah, let me see that. Don Fatale. Who's Don Fatale? And Batty Batty. Sam, did you ever hear that name before? Sound like some opera star. Sam, I know. Those are some of Kitty's friends. She's always boasting about the people she knows. What about it? She's suggesting one of them for our program. She says right here at the top we can have our choice. Yeah? Sam, Sam, where's the phone book? Who are you going to call? Kitty, of course. At this time of night? Sam, you don't think I could sleep when I'm this excited, do you? Here. Here it is. Hello, operator? Alice the Wentworths are probably in bed and asleep. Number, please. L-2621. I thought you didn't like Kitty Wentworth. Sam, I never said that. There are a great many things about her I haven't really cared for, but, dear, I think she has a lot more to her than people give her credit for. Joe Wentworth always said it took time to get to know her. I'm ringing your number. Just keep right on. They're probably in bed. Sam, you know I think I'll give a dinner party for Kitty and Batty Batty Tuesday night. That's the least I can do. Good idea. Be quite an honor to have a concert star here for dinner. Hello? Uh, is this Kitty? Oh. Uh-huh. Kitty, this is Alice. Oh. Uh-huh. Alice Aldrich, I just found your note along with Henry. Oh, yes. And I just want to say I'm so thrilled to think that you can help us. Oh, really, Alice? I don't know what we would have done if you hadn't come to the rescue, because we did want to have something nice. Oh, don't mention it, dear. I thought afterwards perhaps I'd taken Henry too seriously. Oh, no, you just can't realize how grateful I oh, am. Oh, Alice. Uh, there's just one thing, of course, Kitty, and I hope you won't be offended, but naturally, it's the fee, of course. The fee? Oh, Alice, dear, there won't be any. You mean to say there won't be any charge at all? Well, after all, I've always wanted to do something like this for the women's club. Why don't you do this if you insist, Alice? Why not give the fee you were going to pay to the church? Of course, Kitty. We could divide it among all the churches in town. Yes, dear. Well, I won't keep you up any longer, dear. Goodbye. Goodbye? Here's hoping I don't have a cold that night. What? I certainly hate to wait ten years to get a chance to sing at the women's club and then catch cold. What? But don't worry, dear. I won't let you down. Goodbye. What? Sam! Here's your orange juice, Mother. Oh, thank you, Mary. You want another pillow under your head? No, thank you. Now, Mary, if I were you, I'd tiptoe back downstairs. Sam, aren't you going to eat any breakfast? I've eaten. Mother, do you mind if I ask you just one question before I go? What is it? Why aren't either of you speaking to Henry? That's just a little matter concerning us, Mary. But, Father, I'd like to know because maybe I shouldn't be speaking to him either. You shouldn't. Really? Now, just go downstairs. Yes, Father, I'll go. Aren't you going to drink your orange juice, Alice? Sam, you can look at this objectively. You can look at it as a man would. What shall I do? I have no idea. Of course, there's a lot of influenza around. I might get the Board of Health to forbid our holding the concert. Well, you can't get the Board of Health to do that. In the first place, the health commissioner is Kitty Wentworth's cousin. Well, I know what I'm going to do. What? Sam, I've been thinking things over. I have entirely too much work to do around this house. My family needs me, Sam. I'm going to resign. From what? From the women's club. Alice, you can't do that. But I've heard her sing. Alice, (laughs) Joe Wentworth has been one of my best friends for 20 years. Father? Henry, your mother would rather you did not come in. I don't want to come in, Father. I just want to ask if I may go to church. To church? Yes, sir. I think it's a very good idea. You may go with me. The only trouble is my coat. I mean... Well, that's all right. Henry, open the door a minute. Are you sure it won't bother you, Mother? Henry, what tie are you going to wear? My black one. Dear, I want you to wear your brown one. Wouldn't black be more appropriate? Now, Sam... You don't mind if when church is over, I stay for Sunday school, do you? Not at all. Now, please leave the room. Yes, sir. And then I'll come home and help Mary get dinner and rest a little this afternoon until I go back to evening service. Better step along, Henry, or we'll be late. Gee, there are quite a few going to church this morning, aren't there? Yes, sir. Father, have you heard whether there's much influenza around? Oh, I understand there's some. Nothing serious, however. Oh. Father, how big is the fire escape at the woman's club? 
I have no idea. Gee whiz, which house is all that singing coming from? I believe that's coming from the Wentworths. From the Wentworths? You mean she's warming up already? Yes. Let's cross the street. Our regular Wednesday meeting will be held at this church as usual. Miss Eleanor Wentworth handed me this next announcement just before the service began. On Tuesday evening, the Centerville Women's Club Winter Forum will contribute a part of its receipts to the town's churches. The program, instead of being Guatemala the Beautiful, will be a vocal concert sung by our own Mrs. Joseph Wentworth. Let us pray. <laughs> When was that telegram sent, Alice? This morning, dear, the 20th. What does it say? Only speaker we can send you for your program tomorrow evening is Dr. Calvin Anderson Butler on subject of child behavior. Has had 11 years' experience in boys' reform schools and guarantee he will solve your problems. Please wire. Is that all? Sam, I've made up my mind. I'm going to phone Kitty Wentworth and tell her just as nicely as I know how that we do not want her to sing. But, Alice, you can't tell her that. I don't care. We're going to have Dr. Calvin Anderson Butler. Come on, please. Uh, Elm 2621. Very well. Maybe it is for the best. No, I don't know why I didn't have enough courage to do it in the first place. I'll have a talk with Joe Wentworth. He'll understand. Hello? Hello, Eleanor. May I speak with your mother, please? Oh, she isn't here right now, Mrs. Aldrich. Well, Eleanor, when do you expect her back? I'm afraid not until sometime tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yes. She's gone to Chicago. Where? To Chicago. She wanted to get some new clothes for the concert tomorrow night. Really? Well, isn't that lovely, dear? Yes, and why? Oh, I see. Goodbye, Mrs. Orange. Goodbye, Eleanor. Sam. Alice, Alice, take a look at this. What is it? The morning paper. Here it is, the whole thing. Sam, it's a picture of Kitty. And look at the heading. Local thrush to replace Guatemala. <laughs> now, Alice, this is no time in which to have hysterics again. <laughs> Homer, my mother wants to know whether you'd like a little job for tonight. Doing what? Ushering. Well, I'll usher, Henry, but I won't listen. Well, that's all right. When it begins, we can sit out on the front steps. That's what my father says he's going to do. Gee, you ought to see how sore my mother is about tonight. How did your mother happen to ask Mrs. Wentworth to sing? Well, we're very fond of the whole family. Come on, let's go in the station, Homer. What for? I want to weigh myself on these scales. Here, hold my Latin. Boy, have you lost weight. Well, gee, Homer, I've had a bad week. Henry! Do you want me, Mr. Taylor? Uh, you want to earn ten cents, Henry? I've got a telegram here for Mr. Wentworth, and I haven't been able to get in touch with him. You want me to take it up to him? Sure. Here's the message, and here's your dime. Well, thank you very much. And, Henry, don't you fool around any. I think that telegram's important. Oh, you can depend on me, Mr. Taylor. I'll hold it in my hand so I can't possibly forget. Thank you very much. Hello, Centerville Station. This is Joe Wentworth speaking. Is that 320 from Chicago about on time? Say, I've been trying to get you. I just sent a telegram up to you by Henry Aldrich. A telegram? Well, I didn't take it when it came in, but I understand it. It said your wife is stuck in Chicago without any money. Who, Kitty? It's too bad she didn't get a round-trip ticket when she bought it. What did she do, lose her purse? No, I understand she said she spent more money on clothes than she figured she would. And the telegram Henry's taking up to you has the address where you're supposed to wire the money. I see. Well, thank you very much. Sorry I can't get to your wife's concert tonight, Mr. Wentworth. Seems my wife uh, forgot we had a previous engagement. Mm, too bad. Oh, uh, by the way, do you see those two boys coming up Main Street? Yes, sir. One of them isn't Henry Aldrich, is it? I believe it is. Oh, yes, 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 so it is. Well, I guess I'll be stepping down Walnut for something. Look, Homer, look, there he is in front of the filling station. Where? Right there, getting his tank filled. And Homer, he sees us. Wave to him. Oh, Mr. Wentworth! Oh, Mr. Wentworth! What's the matter with him, Henry? He's driving right off. Well, gee whiz, I could have sworn he looked straight at us. Boy, am I getting sick of this, Henry. We haven't been looking for him for so long, Homer. Only about two hours. Sure. At the rate of five cents an hour. 
From now on, we work for nothing. Well, I don't understand why we didn't catch up with him this time. He looked right at us again and then beat it into this drugstore. Maybe he's getting blind, Henry. Well, look, just so he doesn't miss us again, I'll go in this door and you slip around the corner and go in the side door. Okay. We've got him cornered, Homer, and we haven't anything more to worry about. <laughs> Tickets, please. Tickets, please. The program started yet, Henry? Yes, Mrs. Thompson. It's been going on for some time. Very many in there? Oh, gee, practically every seat's taken. In fact, I'm afraid you'll have to stand. Is that so? Just a second. If you don't mind going in real quietly, I'll open the door for you. All right, Henry. And so far, ladies and gentlemen, I have given you only the basic fundamentals of our subject for this evening. Child behavior. During my first three years at the head of a reform school... He's pretty good, isn't he, Henry? Not bad. I think everybody's having a good time, don't you, Homer? My father even came when he heard what the subject was. Program started, boys. Well, gee whiz, Mr. Wentworth, where did you come from? Mm, nowhere in particular. Did your father meet the speaker? Yes, sir, and I've got a telegram here I've been trying to give you ever since 3 o'clock this afternoon. A telegram? Yes, sir, and they said it was very urgent. Yes, uh, all right to go in this door here? But aren't you going to read it? I'll read it later. I want to hear the lecture. And I want to thank you for delivering it, Henry. I thank you very much. Oh, I don't know whether you can get a seat in there or not. I think I can. Your father said he'd save one for me. Oh, have you seen him? Had a little talk with him this afternoon. And you parents who hesitate in giving your children responsibility should realize that although there is a certain amount of risk involved, in the end, our youngsters do somehow manage to get things done. It may not be in a straight line, but I have yet to see it fail when they didn't eventually get there. You know, Henry, that fellow ought to do a lot of good in this town. Let's step out and get some fresh air. That's what I say. They say they took in enough money so that every church in town can get a new window. Stained? Sure. Gee, that makes me feel pretty good. <laughs> you talk as though you'd done the whole thing, Henry. Well, of course, I'm not entirely responsible, Homer, but I've sort of contributed my share. Henry Aldrich will be back in just a moment. In the meantime, friends, remember your two best reasons for drinking Postum are these. Because if coffee makes you nervous, Postum can possibly affect your nerves. And because Postum really does taste swell, it's a grand, flavorful drink for all the family. So get Postum from your grocer tomorrow. Our program tonight has come to you from the Philadelphia Forum. Listen again next week to the Aldrich family, same time, same station, for another sparkling half hour with your favorite youngster, his family, and his pals. The Aldrich Family, starring Ezra Stone, is written by Clifford Goldsmith. Original music is composed and conducted by Jack Miller. This is Harry Von Zell saying you will enjoy fragrant, flavorful Postum. And remember, Postum contains no stimulants. It cannot make you nervous. Good night.